I hope you're ready to learn about a new method to solve simultaneous linear equations. In the previous lesson, we used graphs to find a solution to the simultaneous equations. Each graph on its own was a line of infinite number of solutions. But when we graphed them together, we saw that these lines intersect or cut at one point only. Now, the coordinates of this point were the solution to the set of simultaneous equations. Now have a look at these graphs. What solution do you expect this system to have? What is the x value at the point of intersection? Can it be 1, 5? Perhaps it's 1, 6, 5? Or maybe 1, 4, 5? We have a problem. Even with this neatly sketched graph, we cannot say for sure what the answers are. The intersection point is not a neat pair of whole numbers, like 1, 2, or 8. So we just can't say exactly what the solution is. Now here's another graph. Can you read off the solution from it? The lines look parallel, so I guess there's no solution. I can't see that these graphs are likely to intersect. What do you think? Oops, big mistake. Watch what happens if I zoom out to see more of the Cartesian plane. This isn't what we expected. These graphs do intersect after all. I use this example to show you that finding accurate solutions from graph is not always the most reliable method. The graphs don't always give us the correct answers. We need some other technique to solve our problem. This is where we turn to algebra and use substitution. This is what we'll focus on in this lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve a system of linear equations using the substitution method. Think about the word substitution. Do you know what it means? When a soccer player is injured, he is replaced by a substitute. Or, if your teacher is absent, you might be lucky enough to have a substitute teacher in her place. So substitute means to replace or to use one thing instead of another. Using the substitution method is like grabbing what one variable equals from one equation and substituting or plugging it into another equation. Let's look at an example to see what I mean by this. Look at this system of equations. x plus y equals 24 is equation 1. 2x minus y is equal to minus 6, equation 2. Now let me show you some useful steps that we'll use in the substitution method to solve this problem. Step 1. Simplify if needed. Is there anything we can simplify in these two equations? This is always a good start when working with equations. Step 2. Solve one equation for either variable. Can we solve one of the equations in terms of x or y? Can you remember what this means? Yep. We want the equation in the form y is equal to or x is equal to. We say that we need either x or y as a subject of one of the formulae. It doesn't matter which equation you use or which variable you choose to solve for. There is no right or wrong choice, but some choices make the calculations quicker and easier. Isn't that what we all want? Quick, easy calculations. So which equation would you start with? If a variable has a coefficient of 1, then it would be easier to work with. Now, if you look at equation 1, we see the coefficient of x and y is both 1. So I'll start with equation 1. I choose to write this equation in terms of y. To do this, I add negative x on both sides. I get y is equal to 24 minus x. Now for the third step. Substitute what you get into the other equation. So in this example, we need to substitute what we got for y into the other equation. Do you remember that we wrote the first equation in terms of y? So we need to substitute for y in the second equation. We get 2x minus 
24 minus x is equal to minus 6. Look at this new equation. This equation has only one variable, namely x. Can you see why we replaced y? We have created an equation that is simple to solve. Come on, I'm sure you know how to solve this equation now. And this is our fourth step. We just solve for the remaining variable. Okay, 2x minus 24 plus x is equal to minus 6. So we simplify 2x plus x gives me 3x minus 24 is equal to minus 6. Now we want to keep the x on one side so we get 3x is equal to minus 6 plus 24. We get 3x is equal to 18. Dividing by 3 on both sides we get x is equal to 6. We have found one of the values that satisfies our simultaneous equations. Now all that's left for us to do is solve for the remaining variable y. This is our fifth step. Solve for the second variable. Now how do we do this? Well, we substitute again. You can replace x with 6 in the first equation, the second equation, or in this equation that we set up in step 2. Which one should we use? This equation seems to be the most logical one to choose because we want to solve for y. And here y is already the subject of the formula. So y is equal to 24 minus 6 which is equal to 18. This means that our solution to our system of equations is the ordered pair 6, 18. It's always a good idea to check that our answers are correct. So our sixth and last step is to substitute the solution into both equations. If it makes both equations true, then you have found the solution to your simultaneous equations. So let's check whether the left hand side of the equation is equal to the right hand side. Okay, so we have a simultaneous solution. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Now are you ready to find the next solution to simultaneous equations? Here are the equations. Can we simplify these equations? In equation 1, we can multiply out the bracket to get x minus y minus 4 plus x is equal to minus 1. Now, if we add and subtract like terms, we get 2x minus y minus 4 is equal to minus 1. Now it makes sense for us to get one of the variables onto one side and I'm going to write it in terms of y. So I'm going to add y to both sides and I get 2x minus 4 is equal to y minus 1. I'm now going to add positive 1 to both sides and I get 2x minus 4 plus 1 is equal to y. And this simplifies to 2x minus 3 is equal to y. We could substitute this value for y into equation 2 now. But have a look at it. I think we should do something about these denominators first. This will simplify the equation. To deal with the denominators of 3, we can multiply through by the lowest common denominator, which is 3 in this case. <laughs> The equivalent equation that we have found is 4x minus 2y plus 12 is equal to 0. This looks much easier to work with. Now comes step 3, where I substitute the y equals 2x minus 3 into the second equation.
So substituting for y, we get 4x minus 2 multiplied by 2x minus 3 plus 12 is equal to 0. Now if we multiply out the brackets, we get 4x minus 4x plus 6 plus 12 is equal to 0. And if we add and subtract like terms, we get 4x minus 4x cancels out. 6 plus 12 is 18 is equal to 0. Wait a minute. What's happened to our variable? How can 18 be equal to 0? The statement is obviously false. Now what does this tell us about our original equations? If our variable drops out, as it did here, and we get a false statement like 18 is equal to 0, or 10 is equal to minus 2, then it means that this equation cannot be solved. There cannot be any answers that satisfy both equations. There is no solution. Now, do you remember what the graphs look like when there is no solution to a system of two linear equations? The only time when we get no solution is when the lines are parallel to each other. A quick way to check this is to put each equation in the form y equals mx plus c and then see what their m values are. Remember, the m value tells us about the gradient of the graph. Now, the first equation is already in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's do that to the second equation. So we see that this graph has a gradient of 2 as well as this one. So, this is just as we expected. The gradients are equal. The graphs will be parallel, so there cannot be a point where they intersect. Now, here's another example for us to do. Both equations here are simplified, and in fact, the second equation is already in the form y is equal to. So, it's already solved for y. Now we substitute equation 2 into equation 1. Oops, what's going on here? We seem to have lost our variable again. But now the statement we have left is 4 is equal to 4, which is true. In this case, we have an infinite number of solutions. Can you remember when we had infinite solutions in our graphical method? We notice that if the two lines lie on top of each other, then they are the same line, and you get an infinite number of solutions. In this case, the solution is the whole line. Let's look again at our equations. Can you see that equation 1 and equation 2 are equivalent equations? That means they are the same line, so the solution here is the whole line. So we can write solution is y is equal to 2x minus 4. Now use the following task to check if you understand what we did today. Solve for x and y if x plus 2y is equal to 4 and 3x plus y is equal to 7. Until next time, goodbye.